Today on First Cup, we got some quotes from Rocky Marciano, the great boxer. We're going to talk about stuff that happened with the How to Fight episode that we recorded last night. And I'm going to explain to you why telling people about putting salt in their coffee is a great analogy for life in general. We're live in 10. <sighs> in three, two, one. Good morning, everybody. Welcome. Today is Wednesday. It's September 1st, 2021. My name is Jeremy, and this is my first cup of coffee. Oh, it's ground on my tongue now. I mean, it's the thing I don't like about French press. Does anybody remember the last French press that broke and I was eating, like, pieces of it? That was a bummer. Good morning, Denise. Denise must have the day off from work. Uh, you notice the hood. It's we're, we're in the 50s outside, and I got windows and doors open because it's beautiful. Good morning, Daniel. You know, I don't hate this weather. I don't mind when it's 60, 55, 60 overnight, and then 75 or 80 during the day. It's kind of the best balance of weather. Because you can wear whatever you want during the day, but you don't sweat to death at night. I like it. <laughs> Daniel says, Assassin's Creed, Jeremy, this morning. I just, I, I've always liked wearing a hood. Did I just say that with like a little bit of a Hebrew accent? A hood? <laughs> I think I did. You can put the Jew in the woods, but you can't take the, I don't know, something. Yeah, there's something, I don't know. I feel like it's like I'm wearing a blanket, you know? It's like a Snuggie you can wear in public. Good morning, Frank. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Denise. Good morning, Suze. Um, yeah. So I wanted to open the show as I was as I was making coffee. And I put the salt in. I remembered that, I think it was last week, I mentioned something on Facebook about putting salt in your coffee and people responded actually there were a lot actually i here's what it was i said how do you take your coffee and i said black with a pinch of salt and i got two kinds of responses a bunch of people saying i've done that i learned to do that as a chef that's interesting you know generally kind of positive and then there were a lot of other people who wrote out multi-sentence answers, questioning, questioning my taste, wondering, like, what, what would possess you to put salt in your coffee? Why would you put salt in your coffee? Jeremy, you're so weird. And it was this morning when I made coffee that I realized how many of those people have tried it? Since in the last couple of weeks, those people who drink coffee every day, how many of them were willing to take some coffee, even a little bit, and throw a bit of salt in it and see if it made a difference? I'm going to guess most of them didn't. Now, here's something you could do that's virtually free, doesn't take time, really has no downside because, you know, throwing away a cup of coffee, you can always pour another but could have a tremendous upside. And in fact, there's a bunch of social proof from people saying that it's a really good thing. And I think it's a cl pretty clear analogy for the way a large portion of the population lives their life. And in fact, I think it's a good analogy for martial arts. <sighs> Daniel is is confirming adding salt to coffee suppresses the bitterness and actually enhances its flavor. Absolutely. Salt enhances flavor. That's its whole job. And then he says, does the salt go in the ground when you brew it or the cup when you drink it? I throw it in here. I throw a pinch in here when I make it. There's no wrong way. Good morning, Francis. So here's how this relates to martial arts. If I offer you a suggestion, and let's let's pretend for a moment we're rooted in 
practicality. Let's say it's power generation. Let's say we're talking about, oh, here's a good one. Let's say we're talking about punching power and you're punching. And I say, hey, you know what? If you drop that pinky just a tiny bit, it allows you to engage your lats, which is a pretty big muscle. Oh, let's, let's drop that bit. That, there we go. It allows you to engage your lats, which is a pretty big muscle. You don't have to change anything else. It doesn't slow you down. It might give you some power. We've got people who are going to say one of two things. Oh, I, I need to try that. Where is it? Can somebody hold a shield for me? How about a, how about a heavy bag? Can I try this out? Good morning, Richard. Good morning, Gabe. Or you've got people who are going to say, oh, but you, you can't do that. You can't do that. It has to be completely flat. Okay, that's fine. I didn't say you had to do it that way all the time. I didn't say it was the only way to do it. I didn't even say it was the right way to do it. I said, hey, give this a try. See, there's something that seems to be, that's a terrible way to start a sentence. There's something very interesting about this transition from being a child when we're told, oh, you have to try this. You have to try this food. You have to try this activity. You don't know if you like it. And then we become adults and we stop trying things. And it's really weird to me. I get feedback from people sometimes on this show, sometimes from some of you, sometimes from my clients, my friends. Jeremy, how do you know that? I'm always willing to learn more. I'm always willing to experiment. Much of what I do doesn't work out. I've had plenty of ideas for whistle kick that didn't work out. I've had plenty of ideas in the martial arts world that didn't work out. I've had friendships and romantic relationships that didn't work out. I was willing to take a risk. And as human beings, how do we learn? We learn by making mistakes. How does a baby learn how to walk? By falling over a lot. How do you learn how to throw a good kick? By throwing a lot of bad kicks. It's the mistakes that we made that inform our decisions in the future. So if putting salt in my coffee leads to hey, this coffee tastes terrible, I've learned something. Now, what did I learn? Maybe I learned I'm using like the world's best coffee beans and it doesn't need anything. Or maybe I'm learning that I put too much salt in. Or I don't know, maybe I didn't put salt in, maybe it was pepper, right? I learned something in the process or heaven forbid, I learned that I like salt in my coffee. Gabe asked, what kind of salt do you use? It's just regular old table salt, man. Nothing fancy. Nothing fancy at all. I would like to ask those of you watching, uh, we've fallen out of the habit of doing this. I try not to harp on it much, but if you're watching live, could you throw a thumbs up or a, or a heart or a whatever? If you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, uh, Twitter, I think, would let you do that too. Throw a, throw a like on there. That would be cool. I'd appreciate it. So I said yesterday we recorded a How to Fight. Now, I'm not going to tell you the movie or the actor or the person we recorded with. But Andrew and I recorded with someone who, and, and we talk about this in the opening of the show, somebody that when we, after we did the first one, the test one, we sat down and kind of brainstormed some guests. Thank you, Denise. And we said, you know, you know who I think would be super fun for this? but I don't know if they'd be willing to do it. And I gave him a name and he said, oh my God, yes, that person would be awesome. And he reached out and there was a, a pretty, pretty rapid agreement. And it took some time. There was some scheduling stuff going on. This is a busy person, but it'll be out in a few weeks and it came out really good. It is a classic movie. It is a very well-known actor. And one of our best guests ever. It's a pretty good episode. I just saw a notification come through on my phone. Looks like somebody downloaded the Flex program. People are downloading it. 
those of you in the chat, have you downloaded the Flex program either from whistlekickprograms.com or whistlekick.com? And if you have, have you tried it? See, I'm seeing a lot of people download it, but I'm not getting a lot of feedback yet. The early feedback, the test feedback, people loved it. But I'm kind of wondering, like, is this something people are downloading and not using? Or are they just not downloading it? I mean, are they are they just not talking about it? Or are people reserving judgment until they're done with the, uh, we've got a seven week, uh, six week uh, recommended program in there. It's free. You don't even have to give your email address. If you go to whistlekick.com, it's going to want you to punch in some information. But if you go to whistlekickprograms.com, it's just a link to click. What else did I do yesterday? Went to the gym. I pet a puppy. If you follow me on on Instagram personally, you saw Bodhi, who I've been hearing about for a little while because I, I know I know his owner, and she just picked him up a week and a half ago, and he is a German Shepherd, and his father's 125 pounds. It's gonna be a big dog, and he is so sweet, and I kind of just wanted to cuddle him. And at one point, I, I I scooped him up, and he just started to whimper like I was murdering him. It is. And his owner snaps her head around. And she's looking at me. What are you doing to my dog? I'm like, I just wanted to cuddle him. And she's like, oh, yeah, he's a wimp. He does that. Mm -hmm. Denise said she did send it to someone, too, but not sure if he started it yet. Cool. Thank you. I appreciate that. Episode 842. I fight Chuck Norris. You don't. Chuck Norris fights you. Thanks for tuning in. Until next week, smile, Jay Darn. Have a good day. I love it. I love it, Daniel. I appreciate the comic relief. And you know, what? one of the things I hope, uh, and we've actually kind of, I think we found a way to, to encourage this. Um, you know, Andrew said it at the end of, of each episode, if, well, except for the Roadhouse one, if the actor wants to come on and rebut what we've said we will gladly do a follow-up you know but we we i think we might be able to make that happen for one of them so because let's face it we've had some actors on we might be able to get them on we might be able to do something with that and how cool would that be uh, what's going on today Karate, clients, books. I think I have a call. I don't know. The week starts to open up. There's a lot hanging. I sent out a, a order yesterday. Got another order that should go out today. And somebody wrote in, we, we've got... Um, Here's a question for you. We have had two non-martial arts kind of niches find our sparring gear and really like it. Any guesses? One is one is a sport that has nothing to do with martial arts. And there's a particular thing about one of the, our, our gear and one of the five gear elements, head, gloves, boots, shins, forearms, that they really like. And there's a non-sport use for a different one. Daniel's asking, more karate how many times a week? I'm doing two classes a week. Feels good to get back out on the floor. So I'll give you a hint. The sport is using shin guards. The non-sport is the helmet. So I'll give you guys about 30 seconds. You can post your guesses in the chat. Uh, anything else happened yesterday? No. No, I'm probably going to get outside, do a little bit in the garden. Denise is guessing soccer uh, this morning. Oh, I had a great chat with Justin. A bunch of stuff going, going really well with Marshall Journal. Oh, John says, I know the non-sport use. Heard you mention it before. I think I have talked about that before. Mostly because I it's it's quite an honor that someone would say that or, or want to use it. I've been sleeping really well. 
I've been listening to a, a, a meditation recording before bed. It's about 30 minutes. And I zonk out. It's really nice. Hmm. All right. So Denise is guessing soccer. The sport is not soccer. It's actually lacrosse. This company found us and they said, you know, we really like your shin guards. They're really comfortable. They're soft. They have better shape than the other foam shin guards that we've found. Would you like to set up a wholesale relationship? Yeah. Yeah, I'd love that. And so we've sold them some, some shin guards and they, they wrote us and said, hey, what do you got? And my response was, not much. <laughs> Here's what we got. And let's see if we can make a deal because we ended up with, um, through some purchasing errors, uh, some uncommon color size combinations, meaning very large and very soft, very large sizes of very soft colors, like extra large is in pink. Not a lot of demand for that. You know who buys the pink? Small children, generally. Small children aren't going to wear an XL. I can't wear an XL. Like an XL covers my ankle and my shin and, and my knee. It's huge. It's, it's like this big. It's massive. So we'll see what we can do there. Now, uh, Daniel's right. And I can see the headgear having a use for protection of disabled people with motor control issues. That's exactly what it was. I noticed on Amazon, we had two comments pretty early on, people who found the helmets and that the individuals wearing them really liked our helmets better because they're so much softer. We use a really soft foam that doesn't, doesn't degrade over time. And that's been really cool. It's... I like when you do something and somebody finds a way to add on to it in a way that you never imagined. Right. I think that's great. So, all right, let's tackle the quotes. Frank gave us some quotes. Just a reminder, we haven't really started using the first cup Facebook page yet, but it's there. Make sure if you're a Facebook person, you grab on. On this day in 1923, heavyweight boxing champion Rocky Marciano was born. Roland Lestarza was tough, but Ezard Charles was the toughest man I ever fought. I learned what pain was all about when I fought him. Pain. Pain's a pretty good teacher. Take it back to the top of the episode. If you put salt in your coffee and it hurts your face, I don't know how it would, but you would stop doing that. You put your hand on a hot stove. You stop doing that. You spar with your hands in a particular spot and keep getting kicked in the face. You're going to stop doing that. Pain and discomfort, pain specifically, is a really good teacher. There's a, there's a difference between discomfort and pain. There are lots of things that are uncomfortable that you should do that we know. When I went to the gym last night and I lifted heavy things, it was uncomfortable. But I know there's benefit on the other side. When I go to a, a martial arts class and I work hard and sweat and somebody hits me and it's uncomfortable but i benefit from it daniel says where is my invite to the facebook page i don't know i just invited i invited a half dozen people just to to get it moving facebook wants you to do that when you make a thing but if you search for first cup with jeremy you'll find it ah, it's nothing personal I can't invite every single person who's ever tuned into the show because I don't remember. Oh, hey. Nope, that's not the right thing. I was going to try to plug in this to my laptop, which is already plugged in. That is a charger for m one of my motorcycle helmets, and it no longer works. I have to, I have to stuff the earbuds in under the helmet. Oh, the kid's walking down to the bus. Um, I saw the cutest thing yesterday and then we'll go to the next quote. So I got home, there were dogs in my driveway, which was fine. I don't care. Uh, but two neighbors who I haven't met waiting for their kids to get off the bus. And this is a new thing. We have not had kids on this little road right here. There's only a few houses up there and they're really young kids. 
but the bus pulls up and the of the three dogs one was like a little chihuahua who was chasing my motorcycle and i pulled in so i had to try to not run over the dog the other two finally got to pet they've come into my my yard before and i go out to say hi to them and they bark at me and run away well this time they finally came over and let me pet them big dogs like uh i'm assuming they're rottweiler mixes they have kind of the eyebrow thing going on and it's not a private page you know saying it's a private page all can somebody else that's in the page confirm that it's not private please um and so when the bus pulled up and the doors opened the dogs ran onto the bus. They were so excited to see their kids. They ran onto the bus. It was the cutest thing. And it wasn't like they hung out at the, on the steps and you could see the tails. I mean, they were on the bus. You couldn't see them. It was awesome. It was, it was honestly, it was second to playing with the puppy. It was the best part of my day. It's great. Next one. To win takes a complete commitment of mind and body. When you can't make that commitment, they don't call you a champion anymore. Dogs are the best. Yeah, I agree, Denise. Dogs are the best. Let's talk about commitment. Out of that quote, that's what I heard, commitment. If you commit to something, if you go all in on something... What's the result? You progress or get better results than you would otherwise. Doesn't mean you win. Doesn't mean you're the best. Doesn't mean you're rich. Doesn't even mean that it works. But it means you're you're in there. You're committed. You are focused. Now, I am not someone who generally advocates one thing all in burn the ships that mindset doesn't work for most people in most things but there are times when you have to do it some of the greatest epiphanies that we've had within whistlekick have come as a result of I, I, I don't know what else to do things are about to fall apart for example selling on amazon which by the way we're pretty much done with at least for now. I'm going to send some mouth guards over at some point. Maybe I'll do that today. But. If something is important to you, whether it's your training or a relationship or building a business, it has to be a priority. And if it's not a priority, both in time and in energy, money, you're not going to get the results you want. There are a lot of people who will prioritize getting something, but not keeping it. Again, training, relationships, businesses. And they lose it, whatever it is. It goes away. And they wonder why. Building a friendship. That's something I'm dealing with right now. A number of people who I invested a lot of time into friendships gave up on investing time in return. And those friendships have fallen apart. Or they're at least different. They're not what they were. It happens. It happens all the time. If something matters to you, whatever it is, it requires attention. Whether that's being a boxing champion or anything else. All right, hold on. Stacy says she can't see it either, so let me find it. So I've got it here. It's loading. It's a page. No, I don't want to connect it to WhatsApp. All right, let's see. Who else is here? I'll invite you. Stacy. Let me 
Dan, uh, Daniel, I don't think we're Facebook friends, so I don't, I can't invite you. Stacy, I invited you. Mm. It's here. I can see it. Tell you what, if you're not seeing it, email me or something. Something you guys all know how to get a hold of me. Get a get a message to me somehow, and I'll send you a link. Maybe because it's a new page. I don't know. Facebook is dumb, you guys. Facebook does weird things these days. All right, Stacy got it. Cool. Last quote. Thank you, as always, to Frank for leaving me quotes. I have always adhered to two principles. The first one is to train hard and get in the best physical condition possible. Best, sorry, best possible physical condition. I'm going to read a quote. I'll get it right. The second is to forget all about the other fellow until you face him in the ring and the bell sounds for the fight. I wonder if that was common practice among boxers back then. Because what were they really going to do? There wasn't, I, I would imagine it, watching, let's see, if he was born in 23, he was doing most of his boxing in what, the 40s, maybe 50s? Were people watching tape back then? See, I can't imagine being a fighter today and not watching every fight ever that my opponent would have. I would want to be prepared and build a strategy. And that's the whole premise of how to fight, right? Like that's what we did on the show. Hmm. Now the condition part makes sense. If you're going to face some kind of challenge, you should be as prepared for it physically, mentally as possible. You should be strong. You should be fast. You should be all those things. If you're a martial artist, you should be, I don't know, strong, fast, well-conditioned and flexible. Some programs for that. There's a guy. I know a guy. I know a guy. But the other part, that's really interesting to me. Not worrying about the other person that you're going to fight. And I guess I get it. I, I, I think I understand the mindset. There's only so much you can devote you, there's only so much you can adjust what you do to someone else, especially if you're a boxer, right? If we were talking MMA or something, there's a little bit more diversity in the techniques that you're going to use and train. But if you're a boxer, you've got, you know, four techniques, you got four punches. You're going to practice all of them. You're going to be ready with all of them. Your, while there, there is certainly minutia of strategy, your strategy overall as a boxer. And I think we, we even had a boxer quote that said this recently. Try not to get hit and then hit the other guy. It's pretty much the strategy as a boxer, isn't it? Hmm. That one's sticking with me. If you couldn't tell. All right. I think it's time to go. Hmm. I think I'm going to go check on the stuff outside in the garden. I got apples. I got stuff I got to do with. Don't forget free training day. We're dialing in. Add more and more people to the list. Francis, let me know. Let me know what your plan is. If you have one yet, please. Frank says he's not the only old time boxer who has said that. That doesn't surprise me. Does not surprise me. Denise is saying, have a great day, all. And yes, everyone, have a great day. I appreciate you joining me. I like what we've got going here. This is fun. It really is. I like some of the changes that we've made, bringing you all in with Facebook. Um, the show is fun for me. So thanks for coming on. Have a fantastic day. I'll see you back here tomorrow. And uh, yeah, don't forget. You can get these mugs. Use the code FIRSTCUP15. Patreon. The Patreon continues to grow. Every month, there's a little bit more money coming in because there's somebody else coming in or somebody's bumped up their pledge. 
I will work tirelessly to make sure the people in that group get more than they think they deserve value wise. So if you're in there and there's something you have an idea, I want to hear it. If you're not in there and you're willing to be open with me about why, I would love to know why. Not because I'm going to judge you or guilt you, but because if you're willing to be honest with me about that, that helps me deliver more value. If there's something you're waiting on, because the, the base is two bucks a month. If you don't think that what's there is worth two bucks a month, talk to me. How do I make it better? Right? All about value. Thank you for all of you. <laughs> Francis says, first cup is inspiring with or without salt. I love it. Thank you, my friend. Take care, everybody. I'll see you back here tomorrow. Peace.